You know, I spend a lot of my time reflecting on what happened before, and then I imagine what's going to happen later, and I make plans, and I take care of business, so to speak. I handle things. And so I live on the timeline of my life. And there are certain times, and I seek these out because I'm yearning for an experience that's outside of the timeline of things when I'm experiencing some kind of high art. I was reading a book the other day, and I've been reading it. It's just one of my favorite books, and I'm just so moved. I look forward to being with the book. You know, like, quote, regular life is interfering <clears throat> with my experience with this book because I like being taken to that zone outside of the timeline of things. And also, when there's a crisis, and I work with people that have difficult medical diagnoses, and they are catapulted beyond and outside of the timeline of their lives. They become face-to-face -face with their own mortality, recognizing that the timeline of things had a beginning and it will have an end. There's something really sobering. And I know that when I'm outside of the timeline of things, I then develop naturally this appreciation for the fact that I'm, I'm alive, real basic, nitty-gritty. You know, I'm not as young as I was. I'm getting older. Time seems to only move in one direction. I don't want to be stuck in the timeline of things. And yet I am in one way stuck in the timeline of it. But there is a part of me that just yearns to be in that eternal now. I know that's a cosmic kind of a statement. But the eternal now, it just means that realization of I won't be here forever, but there is a forever moment. There is something that is outside of that timeline, and I yearn for it. And when I know it, when I feel it, when I'm with it, everything relaxes. And everything that's not relaxed keeps me anxiously in the timeline of things. I worry about what was, I worry about what will be, and ironically, that which I'm looking for is actually outside of the timeline. It is to be found within within me. And when I tap into it, it is a space of a place of bliss and enjoyment and appreciation of what is, and no longer a focus on what I don't have and what's missing. Generally speaking, for me, when I'm feeling a yearning or something is missing, that's it. And it is right with me. That's the beautiful irony of it. I just need to be brave enough to turn within. I need to have enough momentum and build momentum of an inwardness that keeps me connected and then just hold on for dear life. And how do I even know that life is dear? It is only through experience, through direct contact. You know, on one level, I am all alone. As dear as relationships and connections are, and as deeply as I'm wired for that, at one level, I am all alone. And it takes guts. I need to be brave to go into that space. Because again, ironically, that's where I'm connected with everything outside of time. Peace out. Love you.